And we bring you back home now, where identity theft, it has uh, been a hot topic and definitely ruined the credit for many Americans. It's easier to prevent than to clean up, that's for sure. Among them, an Angola man who tells me that his problem may have started some 13 years ago. Jeremy Guthrie of Angola is deceased, which makes our meeting yesterday kind of hard to explain. I find out that I'm no longer living, according to all the credit bureaus. Major shock. Jeremy's financial nightmare started back in 1995 when his wallet with his Social Security card inside was stolen in South Bend. The first possible breach we found was in 2000 when someone took out a $25,000 car loan in his name and there are plenty of other items he simply can't explain. Cars that have been purchased and not paid on that I've never owned. Um, bills in South Bend from hospitals that I've never been to. Two years ago, the IRS informed Jeremy he had a tax lien of over $15,000, and they started keeping his tax returns as payment. Things only got worse a few months ago when he was denied a home mortgage after a credit agency informed him he was dead. Jeremy came to us after two years of paying an IRS lien he wasn't even sure was his. Jeremy's situation is not that uncommon and that many individuals find it very intimidating to deal with the IRS. You certainly need to have patience when waiting on their phone system. Yesterday we set up a three-way call with us and Jeremy and the IRS. And for the first time in this two-year ordeal, he finally got some answers as to where that lien was coming from. Jeremy was told his tax lien came from an audit of his income taxes over 10 years ago, but still after his wallet was stolen. He was instructed to do a number of tasks with the FTC and local and police that will document his complaint. Sure. Meanwhile, we consulted an expert in data protection who told us Jeremy's case is an example of why it's so important to protect your ID. If someone were to steal maybe one piece of your information, such as your social security number, uh, they're able to go online and fill in the gaps, uh, your address, your uh, date of birth. Eric Rupp of Summit Data Protection says setting up a fraud alert could have stopped many of Jeremy's problems. It is free with the major agencies. Also, most banks have ID experts on staff for consumers, but most importantly, use sites like annualcreditreport.com to check your credit at least once a year. The IRS also told me never carry your Social Security card in your wallet. As for Jeremy's situation, it is possible the person using his ID recently died as a woman used his Social Security number in a death benefits claim. He now knows he's got an uphill battle to remove a stain from his credit and, more importantly, prove to them that he's alive. Just one little thing like that on your credit report, I mean, basically ruins your life. The IRS has given Jeremy 30 days to provide them with the information they've requested. At that time, they'll review his debt to the government and determine if he was actually the Jeremy Guthrie that acquired it. What happens there? You can't buy a car, you can't buy a home, you can't have any credit. Jeremy was lucky enough that someone finally did give him a car loan, but that's very rare that that wow. were, were to happen. And he's young, so he understands mm -hmm. technology, computers. I mean, when this happens to the elderly, they're just dumbfounded. Yeah. They, they just do not understand baffling. And phishing with the phones is, yeah. is another big one, I think too. it shows the importance of keeping an eye on your credit mm -hmm. and certainly not letting things fester because it will take years, literally.